Hello all, in this video I'm just going to be comparing the TI-84 and the TI-Inspire CX CAS between actually raising a matrix to a certain power. Okay, so what I'm going to do on the actual uh, TI here is raise a matrix, which is a 3x3 matrix, uh, to a power of, uh, let's start with 100 and actually see whether it's able to cope with it. And I'll do the same on the TI Inspire 6 cast. So uh, I've already put in the matrix B, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, select it from the matrix window here. It's a 3x3 matrix, and I'm going to raise it to the power of, let's start with 200 actually, instead of 100, just to make things interesting. And there we go, we get the result there. Uh, if I want to scroll across, I'll actually do it again and hold down the right arrow key. Oh, won't look, doesn't look so it wants to let me go across. But uh, anyway, as you can see, it did it pretty quick, and we've got the first value, which is obviously quite small here. There we go. So we got 0.75 as another value in the matrix. We've got a value that's pretty much zero. Yep. Let's, let's do the same thing on the, the actual TI Inspire 6 CAS here. I've got the same matrix as the initial matrix. Uh, as you can see, I've already raised it to the power of 4,900. I'm just going to copy that. And uh, we're actually just going to start, instead of raising it to the power of 4,900, I'm just going to raise it to the power of 200, like I did on the other calculator. And pretty much that's the matrix you get here, while as on here they go to more decimal places. But that's good, they can both handle to the power of 200, so that's pretty cool. Let, let's uh, step it up a notch though, so let's have the same matrix raised to the power of 500, and see whether it can actually handle it. And I think that's where the uh, TI actually maxes out, so let, let's have a go at raising it to the power of 400. Nope, still too large for the TI-84. So what we'll do is we'll try going to 300. And nope, still too large, so it must max out somewhere between 200 and 300 for actually uh, raising a matrix to a certain power. 250, it just is able to do it, does stall for a second there, but uh, that's all good. So let's have a go, let's step it up to uh, 500 on here, and we can actually see that it should be able to give us a result, it shouldn't be outside of the domain, yep. And as we can see, this value here is in close to zero. We must uh, have a steady state within the matrix because we get keep getting our 0.75 and 0.25 for the other values. But um, let's try having a go at raising this to something a bit more higher than 500. We'll have a go at raising it to the power of a thousand, for example. It does stall for a second there, but as you can see, it's still able to compute it. That value is definitely getting very close to a zero now, uh, and the others again. Let's reach the steady state of the matrix, so we'll just uh, go again, and I'll probably actually type in something a little bit larger this time, 3000, and this is where we start to get the actual clock going up, but uh, I, it looks like it can go further, so I'm going to push it up a little bit further, let's see if we can go to 8000, so we still get the clock here goes for quite some time, but we're still able to get it there, and as you can see, it's definitely getting close to zero. There's a little video comparing the TI-84 and the TI-Inspire CX CAS between actually uh, its limits of uh, raising a matrix to a power. I hope you found this video enjoyable, but of course uh, the TI-Inspire CX CAS won because it has more RAM and that sheer processing power in there as well. But uh, yeah, it was quite interesting just to see the difference between the two. I guess I could go on further with this here, but uh, I think I pretty much proved the point that you can go quite a lot further with this one here. Okay, thanks for watching, and if you have any comments, post them below.